Dear brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's been a great journey so far that we had been dealing with all the important concepts from the Bible and um, I'm really thankful to God that he had opened a platform like this that we are able to meditate freely from the word of God. Um, whenever I say freely, um, some people may think oh, how much it is going to cost and all that. No, it's not about the cost, but it's about the liberty that we have. Um, yeah, it's we are still living in the democratic world and uh, our God has been merciful to help us so far. Okay. A warm welcome to this um, series where we are <clears throat> dealing through the subject of um, genealogy and the, no, sorry, uh, not the genealogy, the evolution of this law of uncleanliness, right? Or we are dealing through this law of uncleanliness. Uh, we started from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse um, 1 to 20, if I'm not wrong. At the same time, we also had other scriptural references coming from Leviticus 11, and then we went to Acts chapter 10, verses uh, 38, and the whole Acts chapter 10 and Acts 11, we have discussed, and uh, then we moved from there all the way to various other scriptures, even from the book of Psalm uh, 51 and many other things we did. Now, a lot of other things also we need to discuss, but we are stuck with this Ezekiel um, 24, I think, sorry, Ezekiel 36, we discussed. Um, I think we are done, but I would like to recap a little bit from where we had left. We are talking through this subject of uncleanliness from various perspective, and it's not going to get any easy. Yeah, yeah, neither it is so difficult, but I really want you to understand, right? We have discussed from Ezekiel 36, 23, all the way to 27, and 27 says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Yeah, this is a wonderful word of God. Um, then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and etc. See, what happens is when God fulfills his promises, there is nothing that could stand in between you and God. There is nothing that could stand in between us and the promises of God, right? It's exactly what you and I need to be mindful. You and I need to take an account always, right? And if there is any hindrance, if at all there is something wrong, then definitely the reason is you, right? You have not been um, careful enough, you have not been attentive enough, and therefore you get into all sorts of problems and troubles. And that's what we have discussed, that God took out the heart of stone and he had, and he had given them the heart of flesh. That's what it means, right? You start to focus on things that are godly and you will move out of ungodly things. Yeah. <clears throat> so even in Old Testament times, the prophets were pointing forward and saying that ultimately uncleanness can only come by the work of God himself. Yeah. It can only come when the internal part of man is transformed, when he is cleansed and when he has a heart of flesh rather than a heart of stone. So in other words, Cleanliness can only come ultimately through the new covenant and through the coming of Jesus. This is how the prophets had been concluding. Always they link it up with Messiah's um, entry, right? Which uh, many, most of the prophets you see, right? Almost all the prophets, I would say, they always talk about even prophets like Daniel, even David had a revelation on Jesus suffering Messiah, Psalm 22. Um, all of them, they finally end up in the new covenant. Why? Because that was a prophecy that is given to the mankind as early as Genesis 
God spoke. And there is no hidden secret as far as this specific matter is concerned. And this is where, you know, we, we, we don't pay enough attention. We, ultimately, the centric person here is Jesus and the new covenant. Now, whose blood cleanses us from all sin? 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. Right? And the prophets looked forward to that. So on the same lines, now what we will do uh, in the upcoming sessions, we will be discussing a little bit from the new covenant perspective through. Um, why? Because we need to understand ultimately what is the new covenant talking on these lines. right? So when we come to the New Testament, what happens? We discover immediately that our Lord begins to discriminate between the cleanliness and uncleanliness aspects or perspectives, right? And particularly when the scribes and Pharisees always dispute with him, uh, you will see, you know, Jesus also gets worked up, but then, yeah, he is always under the commandment, be angry and do not sin. And uh, Jesus, if you look at Mark 7, for example, right, they debate about whether Jesus and his disciples can come in from outside and then begin to eat dinner and they have not ceremonially or ritually right wash their hands because what happens those days they walk all are all around the mud roads and all that right so as a ceremonial practice they wash their hands and legs and they didn't want any kind of germs but then over a period of time that became tradition and tradition became a kind of a law right but initially it was introduced as a hygienic practice and nothing else was the reason <laughs> yeah and this is something the Jews added to the interpretation and the meaning of the Old Testament. And they had more emphasis on cleanliness that was external and that was accounted by their tradition than being, uh, you know, kind of uh, judged by the scriptures. Yeah, I, that's why I explained it a little bit. From the hygienic perspective, it was introduced. And our Lord says, don't you understand that it is not what that comes from without that, I mean, that, that which comes from without that defiles a man, but that which comes from within, yeah, from inside to outside, that's what Jesus meant. For example, your thoughts, they get transformed to words and the kind of language you speak may not be definitely acceptable in the sight of God. Yeah, you're, a, you're, you're clearly violating the um, concept uh, that you, you you just cannot be a gossiper, murmurer, complainer, slanderer. And that's what Jesus, I'm just taking an example here. He talks much, much more uh, things than what I've told you now, um, you know, to, all through his parables and teachings, right? That defiles a man is what proceeds from within him, not with, with, from outside to inside. Inside to outside is what could defile. Then Mark says, parenthetically, if you see, thus he declared all things to be clean. And no one really understood the implications of that until after the death of Jesus Christ. Yeah. All clean means what? Everything that you eat, God had built a system, wonderful system. Wonderfully and fearfully, he made a Psalm 139, 14 and 16 says that and he has numbered our days and he knows how to take good care of us and the physical anatomy is also a very intelligent system which can handle all the bacteria virus and all that but i don't mean to say eat contaminated food or sit in some unhygienic place and eat but then if the situation forces and once or twice you ended up eating and only after eating you understood oh that was such a contaminated food and um, unhygienic place then don't worry man your system is built that way that it is able to heat yeah you know i'm sorry uh, able to handle that's called as you know what is that hydrochloric acid right that all, we, we all have in the stomach if you take that hydrochloric acid in your stomach beautiful system and the physical anatomy right my brother you take that acid and you just put it on your hand what happens is it will penetrate through your body and it will fall down it's such a powerful acid and god created our system and you know what up to 500 or 600 ml of hydrochloric acid is available inside your body and that's what Jesus was trying to say. I know how to handle this, man. And I, I care for your health too as your creator. But you need not be only worried and concerned always about this aspect of, you know, 
uh, what is going to happen to my internals and um, sorry the food that travels etc it'll all be taken care but you must be much more worried about the internal condition of your spiritual anatomy and that's exactly what i have discussed and explained in the body mind spirit and soul series that we have spoken already 85 plus sessions and i'm going back there and i'm going to resume from where i had left after this series i will go back there i just gave it a break because it was just getting too much and uh, you know i had to cover other topics therefore i came here and we started three three series in parallel one is this law of uncleanliness the other one is the evolution and genealogy of christian uh, christianity and recently we kicked off the atonement day of atonement as another short series all these things are happening in parallel and yeah i will get back there i'm not i'm not yet done now cleanliness and uncleanliness in terms of food was what distinguished a jew and a gentile yeah and i've explained this very well from the book of leviticus 11 and also from the book of acts chapter 10 and verse 11 sorry um, acts chapter 10 and chapter 11 we have discussed from the uh, incident of this cornelius right that's the way how the tradition or their law made them distinguish the cleanliness and uncleanliness in terms of food because why the food that are being called as unclean food are being um, you know eaten by you know all the gentiles and therefore the jews call them as you know unclean fellows because they eat all the unclean Uh, foods that are being um, not officially uh, called as you know the clean foods uh, according to the book of moses you all understand what i'm saying even today also i feel little yucks if i see people eating reptiles snakes and all that uh, for example the singapore guys and chinese and all that right they eat everything and anything uh, so insects and worms and all that they will be frying or they'll be eating live also um but i um, but that those foods really you know make me kind of give gives me the pu- puking sensation but do i call those people unclean people no that is by their tradition if it is suiting their body please go ahead and eat but according to the medical science there are certain prescribed foods you get outside that food you will end up in long term consequences but it's up to them right it's a it's 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 free will um uh, thing that has been Uh, it's all democratic right of course that is a communist country but i'm telling you uh, the world doesn't stipulate uh, people by democracy or <laughs> communal commun- communist uh, uh, regime uh, you you're not uh, going to be restricted as far as food is concerned but recently in india there was some intolerance happening uh, not recently long ago uh, where you know by religion you cannot eat this meat and that meat and lot of fights happened and all that i'm not getting to that political um, enigma of how people you know fight with each other but generally i'm telling by food you cannot distinguish a person who whether he is clean or unclean right and that is exactly the fight that happened in india right uh, by religion they say how oh, this meat you cannot eat i didn't say which animal right i leave it to you i'm not here to talk about religion uh, or religious propaganda that is none of my business but it, uh, it this incident happened right and intolerance hashtag intolerance was created in facebook and there were at least some million people or something like that they were fighting with each other like dogs i didn't get there i don't have time for all that nonsense right and they banned such uh, that animal and they couldn't uh, you know that that meat was banned even today also many states they banned that animal by religion why because the ruling party is a religious party and they had certain beliefs their doctrines are believing certain things so now talk from that party's perspective how do they look at the people who continue to eat that animal's meat they are unclean people according to them correct or not i'm telling you not only during the times of leviticus book of leviticus was written or not only during the times of jesus even to this day not only in israel not only limited to jewish people but even in a country like india such discriminations happens because of food hmm? food connecting to religion religion to doctrine and doctrine to people and whoever are eating that meat they call them as uh, unclean people an example i gave you right when i look at people eating these reptiles and all that my goodness i <laughs> i will switch off the television or some 
or whatever i have eaten will come out and i have puked once or twice i couldn't i just cannot take this eat easily by doing that do i hate those guys no you are not permitted that's exactly what jesus said hey all things are clean means what you know all people are clean you don't have to distinguish and judge them by food man but rather you 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 see what is inside of you and judge who you are remove the speck from your eyes before you turn around and start preaching uh, people on the food and all that right and that's exactly what jesus was trying to uh, mention as a very important point and that is that is the key i'm telling you for a building a good society a good community a good um, uh, you know a bunch of people with humanitarian grounds and humanitarian policies and humanity you cannot distinguish or fight with each other based on food hey what is what doesn't suit you or what your doctor says is unclean his doctor says it's clean leave it there why would you restrict i'm telling you this why because this is the reason for i mean many people were killed in that fight i'm telling you that's why it became intolerant and i think that was going on for almost 2 3 years yeah a lot of people were killed um, and yeah it is all there in the facebook and social media you just go and check okay anyway Uh, let's come to the original point we are talking about bible not about political political vedanta i am not interested in that right and that is a the, now the cleanliness and uncleanliness in terms of food was what distinguished a jew and a gentile because by food they were fighting and especially jews they were all at offense they called them as unclean people no way that was the main reason and that's why when god sent that cornelius i mean peter to cornelius house the dream that he allowed um when peter was in trance and all that what dream was that he was talking from the food perspective <laughs> you understand now you are you have no wonders no why god spoke to peter um allowing the dream as far as the food matters are concerned because it's all about the food that, that distinguished a jew from a gentile or a gentile from a jew and the gentiles also hey you know used to hate them why hate the jews they call them as dogs and you are also a dog they fight like dogs the reason is because the jews are not ready to respect the gentile they they're primarily human beings creations of god and then comes everything else right where is that respect that is due for a human being man whether he is poor or rich or big or small or whatever he is or fat or lean <laughs> you need to respect a person because why he is the creation of god you don't need any other reason and the gentiles were very very clear of that i would say gentiles were more uh, uh, i mean that their mannerism was much better their humanitarian um, principles were much better compared to jew and that's why jesus gave that good samaritan uh, parable right a jewish priest came or a jew came or a rabbi came all these guys ignored but then when a, when a, when a guy was brutally attacked and he was lying in the middle of the road bleeding and about to die but a samaritan guy came who was not a jew who was a gentile and the jews called them called that person as an unclean person the unclean person was the one who took care of that guy who was beaten and bruised and he admitted him in a hospital and gave money and sure that this guy is well treated if required next time when i come i will pay the bills but don't discharge him without being healed he talks more from the humanitarian perspective what a humanity it is right and ultimately jesus was telling you go by religion tradition and start to judge people and call this person unclean and that person uh, animal and this person a dog and all that but at the end of the day you are not even a mere human being yeah with 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 minimal humanitarian grounds and humanitarian policies and principles now what kind of person you are yeah you are not even a good human being then comes your tradition then comes your doctrines then comes your laws and commandments instructions from bible then comes bible first of all respect a human being and jesus spoke that parable that was the only parable he spoke more from a generic perspective yeah more from a human humanity perspective because over a period of time what happened is by tradition by law by commandment the jews have moved far away from even the basic humanitarian principles that they are supposed to be compassionate empathizing sympathizing at least and jesus was very hard at them and uh, he was telling them yeah, yeah you know you need to really work upon these principles man 
and that is a jew in order not to eat of the kinds of you know food that god had prohibited uh, could not eat in a gentile home yeah naturally see when you call a gentile uh, unclean fellow naturally you are not going to near for example a vegetarian person doesn't enter into a house where they are they are full of non vegetarian uh, food being prepared fish on one side and uh, mutton on another side and you know whatever you have you know what man you know chicken soup on another side that, that guy will not be able to enter in itself yeah uh, uh, i'm very much used to this uh, you know normal meat you know chicken mutton but in once we tried cooking some other meat i don't want to name what meat it is that my goodness the when we started to cook when the smell came i puked almost and we threw the food we couldn't have so food is also a key parameter here but then you cannot connect it with humanity yeah please don't do that as a mistake and therefore they start to hate gentiles for this reason right and they don't go to gentiles home and that's why they rebuked peter in uh, acts chapter 10 uh, uh, or maybe in acts chapter chapter 11 verses 1 to 15 if you take and read you will see there is a big dispute happening between peter and the uh, jews who had been uh, uh, who had be- who had become the convert uh, accepting jesus they are new to christianity and actually christians by name has been not yet commemorated it happens only later in that chapter at antioch right but before that they were all like kind of half half cooked you know volatile um, people neither there nor here neither in the old covenant nor in the new covenant there are lot of disputes in that they rebuked peter how dare you could go and sit with the gentiles and eat their food at their home man and then peter explains in acts 11 17 and 18 what or 16 17 18 what god has accepted who am i to withstand or reject yeah and that's exactly what you need to understand god creates everyone in his image and he sends to this world and yes by tradition by uh, their forefathers tradition the food habits and the culture they change but they are believers in christ that's enough or even if they are not believers in christ they are creations of god image of god is in them still they have that soul that image of god in them and where is the respect for them yeah that is due that is the reason you know we shouldn't behave like those jewish folks who discriminated people gentiles they call them as dogs yeah and in order for those kind of foods they could not eat in the gentile home because undoubtedly there was going to be a, you know some sort of abomination contamination according to their mindset and attitude and that built up a great wall of separation between jews and gentiles i'm i'm just rewinding the tape little bit and talking through the discriminations and i have given you all the references already so that distinction that distinction or discrimination was designed in the old testament but it had to be set aside in the new testament and that's why acts 10 and 11 i already spoke through uh, or, or the turning point in the christendom in the culture of the christianity so the book of ephesians says the middle wall of uh, partition has been torn down the enmity that existed there has been taken away and the jews and the gentiles have been brought together in one body and the name of the body the new body one new body and the name of the new body is the church yeah that's why fellowship is important and the early age uh, churches they still had the discriminations going on and uh, even until 19th century you see that mahatma gandhi ji when he entered into a church in south africa they didn't love him they said ah this church has been designated for white people you're a brown skin fellow you're a dark skin fellow get lost and you know what he accepted christ but he rejected christians and that is a big loss for our society our community imagine if if um, mahatma gandhi ji accepted jesus and he would have got convicted as a and become a christian this nation is a christian nation and today you will see all the souls worshiping jesus without a choice not by force not emphatically but they would have understood the true doctrines why because the father of the nation indian nation itself has accepted jesus and he's a christian we lost such a great opportunity right and why because 
of the discrimination that existed. But the new covenant brings people together, right? And thus in Acts 10, God said in a vision to Peter that he wanted him to eat of these things which Peter recognized as being unclean by Old Testament definition. And Peter said, oh, no, no harm, sandwich for me, <laughs> something like that. But God said to him three times, what I have called clean, don't you call unclean? Yeah, it, it starts from the food, but his point is something else. Now, God is full of wisdom and he's the most intellectual person um, of any age and of any era. Of, and you cannot compare his wisdom to anyone. It is beyond, far beyond human understanding. Now, he takes the arbitrary uh, definition of cleanliness and uncleanliness. And something is clean or unclean because God declares it to be, you know, that's the way it is to be. That means if God redeclares that something which was unclean is now clean, then you better call it as clean. That's ultimately I'm trying to say. And Peter had difficulty understanding that. And therefore, Peter had to be sent to Cornelius' home and God had to talk to Cornelius to send his people to Peter because Peter himself is not going to go there until he finds a proof. See how God is merciful now. And one side, God is merciful and the other side, Peter was really reluctant. He did not react. And God knows that he is not going to react. Why? Because he is not to be blamed because that's the way how his culture and tradition had brought him up. And therefore, Cornelius had the same dream. God sent the same dream to Cornelius. And Cornelius sent his people all the way to Peter's home. And they brought Peter. They invited him. Please come. Because of your God spoke to us. And that is something that he is trying to do. And come. We respect that. You see how humble they are? They respect it. When even the Jewish God spoke to them, they respect it. According to them, Jesus was Jewish God. And even to this day, many, many countries, they call Jesus as Jewish God, Western God, English God, foreign God and all that. No man is God overall and he loves you. And that's the reason he had shed his blood even for you. Yeah, do not discriminate him or reject him for this reason. So when he finally got the message, Peter, he went to the house of Cornelius and he ate his ham or bacon or and tomato sandwich and he shares the gospel with them. right? And they are saved. And I appreciate Peter for what he had done, right? It was not easy for him, although uh, he was used to certain food, but the poor fellow, without a choice, he started to eat. Uh, and they are saved, finally. And then the whole church, which is predominantly um, Jewish at that, the, at that time, has to go through the same struggle, and Peter has to remind them that God no longer has distinguished between Jews and Gentiles. And we saw that and we, we saw what happened in Acts 2. Yeah, we, we, we dealt with that also. And everyone knows the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down on the Jews um, uh, who rejected Jesus, but the Holy Spirit did not reject. When they were listening, while they were still listening, the Holy Spirit came on them. And that's what Jesus says, right? Where you were called as unclean according to my standards. But then I never called you unclean. You are clean. And I accepted you. Although you were unclean, inside of you and outside of you, you crucified me. And who are you? I am clean and you are unclean. But Jesus never discriminated. As much as you people received um, the undeserving grace and the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, for which you do not deserve, in a similar way, it's my choice. It's my will. I want to bless the Gentiles too uh, with this uh, anointing. And what is your problem? God asks them. Yeah. And that's exactly what you and I also need to be mindful Whenever we judge a person, remember that you you are not all qualified to receive these blessings and the name of Jesus, etc. Yeah, and in Acts two, the Spirit came down on the Jews. Now, when the gospel was preached to this Gentile group, the Spirit came upon them in exactly the same way. Yeah, in Acts uh, uh, chapter ten, uh, later half of, I mean, forty onwards, you take and read, you will understand. And God doesn't distinguish Jewish Christians from Gentile Christians. They are one body, members of the same body. And that's why they commemorated and giving that name as Christians. Yeah, as the new, you can call it a new religion or a new tradition, but a new name is given. Why? Because the definition is new, right? 
the 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 connotation is new the tense is new and therefore they had to call it with a different name there is no discrimination anymore and the church says oh so god doesn't distinguish anymore and then the next verse says that they went out and preached only to jews <laughs> they have never changed yeah acts 11 says that right acts chapter 11 you take and read it wasn't until after few uh you know brave uh, people they went out and began to share the gospel with gentile unbelievers and that was the predominant ministry of paul the apostle right and they got saved that that uh, that we begin to have a church that was mixed with um jewish and gentile believers the distinctions were set aside the differences were set aside yeah and therefore it was wrong to maintain and even to this day all the churches they function that way is what i believe yeah and uh, they don't discriminate the poor and rich and the uh, gentile and the jewish anybody can come we are all the members of the same christ um, we are also members of the same body and the head of the body is christ correct no it was so that wasn't the case before but the distinctions were set aside therefore it was wrong to maintain that distinction of food laws and here paul had to jump all over peter in galatians 2 because Uh, peter was not completely out of that you know jewish tradition in fact he wants to be but then he was scared and then peter was rebuked by um paul uh, who was sitting only with a jewish group and he was implying to the gentile group that if they wanted to become part of the jewish group they had to act jewish he was em- emphasizing certain rules and laws and which was completely wrong and paul jumps all over them and says it is not just wrong but it is a denial and a contradiction of the gospel of jesus christ man and this is because the gospel of jesus christ not only removes the barrier between man and god but it builds unity ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 it removes all barriers between jews and gentiles from all the mankind right it removes all the cultural barriers language barriers the skin color racism barriers right gender biases those barriers all sorts of barriers between the sinners like for example according to the olden day standards or oh, sinner is somebody who was an adulterer murderer and all that right but then what is inside of you nobody bothered even gossiping is a sin according to god standards yeah one timothy chapter 3 1 to 9 mark 7 21 to 23 and galatians 5 17 to 21 you will see at least 40 to 45 different sets of passive sins that are inside you not active sins but passive sins they are inside you but the distinctions don't count therefore those distinctions cannot be maintained if you are a new testament person washed by the blood of jesus and living in the glory of the new covenant as it is described in second corinthians 3 then you cannot at least do that beloved yeah if that is your attitude please change now you're all with me so far <clears throat> i will take another 5 7 minutes or i will close it yeah i want to complete this i've just made some notes and i want to walk you through so in the new testament we find chapters like colossians 2 which says these practices which they have to do with external things have no value in overcoming the struggle with the flesh you understand so your external principles or your external practices will take you nowhere beloved and that's why jesus also spoke through that parable a person who was a sinner um, had gone to god and then he starts to confess oh god i'm not worthy to be part of um, <clears throat> this ch- um, uh, even enter into your church but then i'm standing at a distance and confessing he beats on his chest bible says and uh, then you know uh, then god accepts him so if you look at uh, colossians 2 likewise not philosophy but christ and paul speaks about the concept of don't be philosophical don't be theological don't go by theory or don't go by your theoretical standards and then start to judge people and all that because that's not the way how christ built his church that's not the way how christ want to is it want this community to operate right a community in the sense the uh, christians who were commemorated right as early as acts 11 26 and uh, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men and according to the basic principles of the world 
and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Paul makes the statements in Colossians 2 verses 8 to 10. I've read it for you. So don't go by some simple, simply, you know, some people know, especially I've gone through it a lot of, lot of times, even within my blood relations. They would say, hey, you know, no, you cannot eat like this or you cannot go to that house. You cannot do this. You cannot meet that person. You should not, uh, you know, see, I was, a, I, I like drums, right? Drumming. I'm a, I want to be a drummer. And uh, I will give you one example. Then you will understand how people are kind of blindfolded because of the traditional beliefs which their ancestors or forefathers believed. Yeah. So when I was discussing with few elders in my family that I want to buy a new drum set and start to practice, the first thing that they came out of is uh, of their mouth or of their mind is, oh, you know what? Drums are not good. Uh -huh. um, they may invite the evil spirits and uh, if you start drumming in the middle of your home, no, your your house will be demon possessed. I said, where is it in Bible? Please, can you show it from Bible? Then I'm ready to accept. Then they say, no, 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 it's not in the Bible, uh, but it is uh, widely believed that way. And I said, who is believing and who introduced this doctrine? If it was not for Jesus, then I'm not going to believe this. Then, then the argument became little intensified. Then they said, no, no. You can't do this. If you do this, then you are insulting the forefather's tradition. I said, may it be so, right? Because my forefather was Noah and we are all children of Noah. And after that, there came the second Adam. His name is Jesus. And he introduced all these doctrines and show me from there that I'm listening. If you're not talking from Bible, I'm not listening. I'm sorry. Because what God calls us clean is unclean to you and what you call as unclean is not unclean to me why because i go by what god says and not what by men says right i don't go by the traditions of men but i go by the doctrines of the gospel they were all ultimately upset, very upset with me and i ended up buying a very good drum set uh, a nice electrical drum set and i uh, start to practice the drums only thing my back is not go cooperating a little bit because <laughs> because of my profession you know my back back became a little weak uh, because too much of sitting and all that now i'm praying to god god strengthen my back and all that but still i'm and i've enrolled for my drum classes and all good all good i mean the more i'm drumming that day i'm 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 feeling in my spirit that the demons are running away <laughs> even from my area neighborhood <laughs> so it's other way around so they were also quoting various examples like you know that guy used to, um, you know, be a drummer and that guy used to uh, play this tabla. Tabla is an instrument also. All these things, no, it is not good. Then I asked him one question. Then how is that they are playing drums in the church and you're going and attending service in the church and uh, you think the church is full of demons? Then they are saying, oh, the same forefathers told it is allowed in church. Mass gathering, it is allowed, but it is not good for, uh, you know, individual homes or independent uh, homes. And I said, stop there, please. I don't want to waste my time talking to you. I got very irritated. I said, sorry, I don't have time for all this. And they were very upset with me. And some people, some elders even didn't talk to me for a few months and then nothing happened to me, right? Then they realized, oh, maybe we were wrong. But they were, they had all that egoistic thing, no? So they would not come and confess. Oh, yeah, we were wrong and you were right. I said, fine. You keep your egos with you. God bless you. But uh, I'm going ahead according to the doctrines of the gospel. So, beloved, what I'm trying to say is, when the Holy Spirit convicts you, calling what the world calls as unclean, I mean, terming what, what, what the world calls as unclean, uh, um, as clean, and go by what your Holy Spirit says. But for which you need to check on the spiritual condition. You need to check on the condition of your own spirit. Is it on the side of Holy Spirit or is it on the side of the worldly spirit? That is the evil spirit. Correct? If you are a traditional person, clearly you are being driven by a bunch of unclean spirits and you are demon possessed. Yeah. For example, those elders who came and argued with me when I had discussed this idea with them. Hey, I am planning to do this. I didn't. I didn't want their approval or permission, but then... I had that sense of respect. I thought, okay, fine, let me discuss. Because why? My Bible taught me that I need to respect elders. Correct, no? And therefore, I showed that respect. And the same Bible taught me that you need not be carried away with the worldly principles and worldly doctrines. Do not be conformed to the world. That's what Bible says in Romans 12.1. And Bible says, do not be people pleasers. Oh, 
my uncle will be upset my cousin brother will be uh, crying and all that don't don't do things for men but do things for god that's exactly what i'm trying to say and what paul was trying to say more than me and in, in continuation in colossians 2 not legalism but christ so in him you were all circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of christ yeah you all understand this no i think i preached on this also not legalism but christ it's available in the playlist so i will not go through the details but here he is mentioning about the circumcision which is traditionally like removing the foreskin of a male's organ private organ uh, is what Jewish folks, you know, traditionally remembered as the uh, circumcision. But he says circumcision happens in your heart, man. Yeah. And here, you know, you can connect it with, you know, 1 Corinthians, Ezekiel 36, 26, which we discussed, right, in the previous uh, chapter. Yeah. He removes the stone, the heart of stone and gives you the heart of flesh, which means what? By tradition, you have become so hard against people. Have you seen some people, especially believers? Oh, we are not supposed to help anyone other than Christians. Who told you that, man? Jesus' predominant ministry was much among the Gentiles. His ministry with uh, um, among the Jewish people were full of quarrels, fights, disputes, arguments, to the extent of stoning him to death. But Gentiles received him gladly. Who told you that? Please don't discriminate between this religion and um, all that and call it as unclean and clean and first help the believers in Christ. Why not the neighbors? Why not your neighbor who is an unbeliever? You know what? When you help him, he is going to see Christ in you and without you speaking a word, he is going to accept Jesus. Don't you want to save that soul through the external manifestations too? Right? Your behavior, be the doer of the word and not just a hearer. Always sympathizing but no empathizing attitude. Nobody is going to trust you. Nobody is going to come even an inch closer to Jesus. Is it what you want? That's what uh, you know. He says here. Paul says here. Uh, circumcision begin, begins in art, which means what? Conviction begins in art. Realization and repentance begins in art. Attitude of peace begins in heart. Yeah, buried with him in baptism, in which you were all raised with him through faith in the working of God, or raised from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Ultimately, he's, I mean, it may sound a little complicated. If you cannot understand this, go, go to my playlist, you will find there, right? The short interesting session, something like that, a playlist is there. In that I've spoken of from here for one hour already. It's available. Ultimately, what Paul is trying to say, with that we will close. My time is up. Um, he's saying, hey, do not go by man's tradition or man's way of discriminating people. And do not go by philosophy. Do not go by tradition. Do not go by legalism. If you're a legalist, right, you are um, condemning people by the law. Uh, but then you don't have to condemn. You don't. You have to accept the person as he is. It doesn't mean that you need to get into the unclean culture. But at least in your heart, do not call him a criminal. Do not call him a demon. Do not call him a demon possessed person and all that. But rather, love him with all your heart and pray. That's what Bible says in Matthew 5:44 40, to 48. That do not do bless those who persecute you, those who torture you, those who have. Uh, Hey, those who had been hating you for all wrong reasons, right? And you don't deserve to be uh, to, to, to for that hatred or for that kind of dispute. That's exactly what uh, Paul is trying to say here. And the more you abide in these principles, the more you are closer to God. Otherwise, what happens is the crucifixion on the cross and the shed, when the bloodshed happened on the cross, remission of sins and the propitiation of sins, Jesus himself became our high priest, Hebrews 2.17 and Acts 2.38, all becomes nullified. These doctrines are nullified through your actions and don't do that. Because why? The nail that was pierced into the hands and legs of Jesus, in the body of Jesus, and whatever and uh, uh, what was nailed was not the body of Christ, but all this kind of 
you know behavioral pattern the traditions of the past right that split the humanity that split the mankind from the love of god was the one where the ones which were actually nailed to the cross is what paul saying there wonderful explanation no all right we will continue from where we had left we are not yet done we will continue to meditate and uh, we are still dealing through this law of uncleanliness versus law of cleanliness and may god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity we always appreciate your mercies how clear how clearly plainly you are talking to us oh lord your mercies are awesome In jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our play playlist and share it with your friends relatives near ones dear ones and uh, be an instrument in the hands of god to spread his holy word and continue to support our ministries remember us and remember our ministries every day 10 seconds pray for us that's all we are asking god bless you